Hi there, I'm Christy and this is Nancy from Tales of the Revenant Reader and we're here today with our 12 Days of Christmas, which probably actually won't be 12 Days of Christmas no. feature, um, but we want to talk about our book talk this month, which is what the heck to get your bookish friends because... For the holidays. Yes, for yeah. the holidays because books are an option, but um, if they're TBRs, look anything like ours they're probably yeah. long and you probably own half the books you want to talk about anyways so we want to talk about bookish items but also books that we recommend from this year that we read um that are kind of unsung heroes our top favorite books. our top favorite books so nancy you want to go with your first favorite sure and my first favorite is the 12 days of dash and lily i yes. really love that book i think christy loved it too probably yeah equally love it because yes. david loveth then and there is, you know, there's a girl, like librarians in there, not really, no bloodshed was, <laughs> was, was done, but it was a really great part of the story, and it's something that always brings a smile on my face every time I think about it, so I really love that book. And who doesn't totally love great. Dash? So, yeah, that's how I feel too. Who doesn't love Dash? She is like the most perfect boyfriend ever, and it's a perfect Christmas story when I feel like there are so few in YA, there are so few Christmas yeah. stories. Um, and that one's just perfect. And it's a sequel, so you get twice as much Dash and Lily, which is super great. It was a really good one. Good choice. You want me to go? Yeah. All right, so my first pick is Mockingbird, which is actually not a book. It's, well, it is a book. It's a graphic novel, the first volume in a comic series. Um, and it is super great because it is very feminist. It's very sarcastic. It's sarcastic in a good way. It's snarky, but it's a good kind of snark. It really brings into things a lot in a lot of questions. Plus, it puts um, Tony Stark in this really, really funny light, um, which is really great. And the second volume is coming out next year. And the series was canceled, unfortunately, but it's not one to be missed. So that's my first choice this year as far as books. My second choice was A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole. Talk about ugly cry. I cried from the very first chapter all She texted me the whole time. <laughs> that book. It was so sad. If you looked at me, I, I was actually listening to it in my car and I would drive to work and get there and my face was all puffy, my nose was red, it was a mess and my coworkers were like, what's going on? Is everything okay? I said, mm, it's a really sad book, but it's really beautiful. So it's just a really beautiful like love story, you know, that, that these characters that fell in love with they were children all the way through, you know, with their teens and stuff. So I really enjoyed it. Love the writing, you know, over the top, but it was good that way. So yeah. That was a nice cover. That's a really nice cover too. Yeah, it does have a really nice cover. So if you buy that one, make sure you buy some tissues to go along with it. Yes, you need the Maybe tissues. Maybe some chocolate, you know, Baskin Robbins gift card. Word. Yeah, you're, you're gonna need that, and you're gonna need your friend's phone number on speed dial, you know, somebody that you can talk to about it. So if you read it and want to, you can always like text me, you know, and I'll, you know, I'll help. Yeah, we're here for you for your feels. Mm -hmm. um, my second pick this year is my absolute top one best book of this year, which is Break Me Like a Promise by Tiffany Schmidt. Um, I feel like this book does not get the love it deserves. It's a second in a series, but it is a standalone series, so each book is its own separate. You don't have had to read the first book in the series. I still haven't read the first book in the series, but it, I read it at Warped Tour, which was the worst mistake of my life, because I'm sitting in the seat watching these punk rock bands play, and I'm just sobbing. <laughs> Just like Chris is sitting next to me, I'm like, don't look, don't look at me. <laughs> but it's such a great, such a great book, and it has a really kind of dark premise um, of organ trading, which is not as dark as it seems, but it's a love story um, that gets a happily ever after. And it's not done. There's more coming in the series, so that's really, I know, it's good. It's really good. It doesn't have anything on Audible though, so it's actually a physical book you have to buy. And if I'm not mistaken, if you really are interested in it, I think Kepler still has signed copies of that and Hold Me Like a Breath, which is the first book in the series. Yes. Okay. And my third book is Gemina, which is the second novel in the Illuminate um, trilogy. I think it's yes, a trilogy, trilogy by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Absolutely loved this book. And I'm not a sci-fi fan. You can ask her. I mean, that's not my deal. But I think you can call it what? Like space opera? It's space opera. Like space opera. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Again, it's something that I listened to on audible and there were moments in my car that they were like shaking it's like it's a full cast audio and there's sound effects and everything and so if you love listening to books that would be the best 
kind of introduction into, you know, um, audiobooks that I can recommend. Really great story. I've heard too that some people think it could be treated as a standalone. It can. Um, I mean, I, so I have, I read Illuminate, yeah. but I feel like it stands alone in itself and you really can kind of get the gist of what's happening. So we'll see how that continues into the third book. Yeah. Um, and yeah. hopefully we find out who the security footage guy is. Who will? They said that we're going to find out who it is. And yeah. we may or may not have already met him. Yeah. So we'll see how and that so, goes. Yeah, so yeah, the first one, you always wanted to know what was going on with the Gemini ship right. that they were trying Heaven's to get a hold right? Yeah, that they were trying to get a hold of. And they were trying to, but they couldn't. So this kind of gives you all the explanation why things why they couldn't establish contact and what was going on, which is good. Right, yeah. exactly. My third book that I absolutely love recommending, and it's the one book I said I was going to buy for Christmas for people, and I absolutely have, is Outrun the Moon by Stacey Lee. Oh my gosh. If you haven't seen our snap story about Outrun the Moon, it is a great book. It's set in San Francisco. It's set based on the 1906 earthquake, mm -hmm. um, and Mercy Wong is a force to be reckoned with. She is Character. so great, and the book is so 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 wonderful um it's good all the way through really good all the way through even though i mean the obviously the earthquake is tragic but it does have a good story of community and um just overall it's very culturally relevant to yes. the asian americans at the time so yeah definitely recommend out on the moon to everybody anybody and of course if you're looking to get more than one book you can always pick up under painted sky which is also historical fiction from stacy lee and my fourth book is 738 days by stacy kate which was a sleeper hit for me because i had I, I sort of had a clue of what I was reading, but it unfolded into a story that I was completely surprised by. Um, a story about a girl who was kidnapped and um, oh, rescued, and the only thing that kept her going through the it's time that she was abducted was this poster of this TV star that she, oh, you know, would like channel all her energy into and trying to like figure out if she could get out of there it was because that person was giving her the strength to do so so she does make it out and years later she's still dealing with all these issues and that particular movie star is having issues of his own and his publicist <laughs> creates this opportunity that brings them together mm -hmm. and what stems from there is just a really great story and I had no idea that it was going to go that way and I really liked it. It's a little steamier and I would say... It's like a new the, adult book yeah, for sure. I would, I would say that it was new adult and not so much mm -hmm. as um, young adult. Yeah, it definitely is way steamier than what the normal YA is nowadays. But And it's good on, on audio too. It's got dual narration, which yeah. just, you put anything in dual narration, I'll probably listen to really it. Good. It's so, just really yeah. good. Um, my next book is a book that I only recently read and that and I like kick myself every day because it is such an awesome book. It's We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. We had the chance to see him at the Barry Book Festival this year and I was as I heard about heard him talk about his book is a book based on the cover, which I'm totally the person that picks up books based on covers. Um, I would not have picked up, but it is a sci-fi light contemporary story about a kid who believes he is abducted by aliens. It's up to you whether you want to believe him along that, with that. Um, and he has the opportunity to push a button and save the world. And he is going through his own mental health crisis and doesn't know whether the world is actually worth saving. So it's his story of coming out on the other side of that. It is an own voices book. Um, it's, a, it's a book based on gay characters. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, and the audio is also wonderful on it. I'm so, so, so glad I read it. Um, so thank you YA Wednesdays for forcing that one upon me because I probably wouldn't have picked it up until way too late otherwise. And my last choice is Revenge in the Wild by Michelle Modesto. I love that book. <laughs> Loved it. I can't even begin to tell you how much I love that book because it's like talking about every single genre that you could think of and throwing it into this mosh pit and coming out with this really great book. It has cannibals in it and vampires and werewolves, shamans, chupacabras. The girl has a chupacabra. She has a pet <laughs> I mean, how could you not love it? And it you would think that that'd be too much crazy, too much stuff that's thrown into a story, but mm -hmm. it all works mm -hmm. out so well. And there's steampunk elements and everything in it, and yeah, there, yeah, 
it's one of, one of my absolute favorites. I think it's like my top three for this year because it completely, yeah. like, I, I couldn't get enough of it and I want so much more of that world. And I wish we could. Yeah. But, it's know. a standalone. Yeah. So unfortunately, unfortunately. that's uh, how it works. Yeah. Um, my last pick is not one book, but many books. It's actually a whole world created by Gwenda Bond. The, the I know, I know. It's the Circa American World, um, which is two books so far, Girl in the Wire and Girl in the Shadows. They are standalone books in a series. Same characters in both, but you get a little taste and you don't have had to read one or the other. Plus her graphic novel, which is um, Circa American, and it's, mm -hmm. it's co-written with Kate Leff, who I absolutely adore, and the art is by Ming Doyle, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think you can get all of them on Kindle for under $10, or at least you could a few days ago, which is an incredible deal for all those books. Um, and it it's not something I would normally read. It is magical. It is set in a circus world. It is... It's just something totally outside the norm for me, and I could not get enough. And I hope she's writing more because I loved it so much. And I'm pretty sure I melted all over her when we were at, when I was at Y'all Fest a few weeks ago. And I was like, oh my god! She was like, you weren't kidding when you said you were bringing everything I've written. <laughs> like she, I did. She that was her number one person to see yes. while she was there. So yeah, she could not wait. And I want to pass that on to everybody else. I know we've done giveaways for her books. I even bid on her. We need diverse books is doing mm -hmm. a lot, and I bid on a lot even though I own all her books yes. signed already but I'm like I want to give them to somebody else if nobody else was on which I, I hope that they do so in addition to books we want to share some of our favorite bookish items yes. that we have so Nancy you want to share your first bookish item this these are things we want you to give to people a highly coveted item that many people really want but I was lucky one day and got onto my Etsy account and oh my god this is the first time I'm seeing it in person the book bow. Yeah. And look, so look, it's made of beautiful material. It's nice and stiff so it can hold your book in there pretty well. Um, I've tested it out and I was showing her last night. It could fit in all there. these videos. Look, so at great. This, look at this. This could fit in here. So if you have, it could fit a soft cover book like up to like 400 to maybe 30 or so pages in here that you could fit a soft cover book in there pretty good up uh, the trade paperback size now if you have a hardcover book that is on that trade paperback size you could fit it up to like 400 pages maybe a little less and you could fit in there quite comfortably where you can put the book in and out and get it with with them um, with ease a little bit more than that might not fit in there so well but otherwise these look like really great you could just throw it in your bag and save your your book from getting all crumply and stuff so yeah they're very beautiful there's all kinds of designs yeah. in their app you have to follow the etsy shop and get notifications if you want to get one because they go within seconds yeah i've like seen them go and i'm like it's in my cart and it's like whoop, nope there gone. it goes it's gone because so. they're so beautifully made and their yeah. the quality is so consistent yeah. So. yeah so very nicely made so very Highly coveted, and I think people would love it. So if, you get, if you're able to get one, I'm really sure with that. And put a book inside. There yeah. you go. Get wrapped yeah. up in a bow. It's good to go. Done. That's awesome. All right. Good. Let's see what I got back here. Uh, first thing I brought is a mug. This is one example of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mugs that are on um, Society Six, mm -hmm. Red Bobble, pretty much anywhere where you can get yeah. cu people's custom shops. This mm -hmm. one is by E V S E O. Um, it's the Illuminate Merciful design. I absolutely love it. It is not the standard size mug, which is great because um, I, I like yeah. more coffee and cocoa yeah. than fits in a standard size mug. So this one is absolutely perfect. I love this mug and I highly recommend. She has her designs in pretty much everything. Tote bags, pillowcases, iPad cases, yeah. stickers. I have some of her stickers. I have a sticker on my window from her. So she has pretty much everything. But I highly recommend yeah. the mug. It's really well made. It has beautiful stuff. So one of my other obsessions is candles. So what I really like are these candles from the Melting Library. This one is for the Night Court because I am a big fan of Sarah Jane Moss and her court series. So this one's this one says it's jasmine, salty breezes, rain, and citrus. Does it actually smell that way? I don't know, does it smell like that? Oh my god, it totally does. <laughs> Like you can smell all of those things there. I love this. Yeah. Is this a quote from the book? Yeah. So that's what that's my favorite thing about her. So another thing is her night circus one, which this one has um, au revoir. So it has firewood, kettle corn, candy apples, and fudge. This is my favorite. Totally smells like it. Oh my god, totally does. It does. And so what happens on the chopper with the finishing touch is right here. She'll put a quote 
of the story like right on the top and just a little picture in there so it's really cute make sure you take that off before you, <laughs> so you don't that. burn it <laughs> <laughs> so the Melting Library has this. So if you go on to Etsy, there's tons of them that are on there that you can look just with book candles and they have all kinds to, for your different uh, favorite book needs, I guess, that you can have that for. And another one that I found is this that I found. I forgot what bookstore that I went into. I think it was a local bookstore in Benicia, like near my hometown. And it's called the Philosopher's Guild, you know, candles. <laughs> if you like Jane Austen. So they have St. Jane. And then they have a little quote that talks about her in the back about St. Jane. <laughs> <laughs> but she also has one that's up on top too, so it's really cute. So if you like Jane Austen, this is like an idea. I feel you like know. you should like sneak that into like a prayer. Yeah. <laughs> that's a terrible thought. Don't do that. That's bad. <laughs> but just in case, you know, just this is for those people that really like Jane Austen and you know, what else are you gonna get from them except like the books and right. like other Which they probably things already that you Mm-hmm. So this is like one of my favorite ones too. So looks really sparkly. I brought along my favorite of my bookish pins. Both Nancy and I own a ton of bookish pins. Mm -hmm. This one is from Jubilee Oak. Jubilee yeah. Oak. Um, and it says, Australia. right, Reader's mm -hmm. Gotta Read. It's got a really great back on it. It's really well made. Um, this is one of many pins that they have. Mm -hmm. They also have a Darth Vader um, Sugar School. I bought that, that one really for cute. somebody. It's super cute. So I highly recommend this pin, plus Etsy has tons of pins. Mm -hmm. My favorite, some of my favorites are like the Reading Rainbow pins. I'm yeah. like, I kind of just want one of those just to have one for nostalgia's sake. So pins are definitely yeah. a great option for mm -hmm. your bookish friends. Yeah. You have other stuff? Just totes. Just totes. All right, I have, I have one more thing that I brought with me, oh. which was actually Nancy's suggestion, and I own it because mm -hmm. of Nancy. So mm -hmm. um, right. special editions of books. Yeah. That is such a great gift. Um, signed editions of books are a great gift mm -hmm. too. This one is the Crave edition of November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I have not read this yet. It's on my TBR and I'm hoping to get it done tomorrow, but we'll see about that. Um, this book, if you know, the cover is pink originally. It doesn't look like this. It doesn't have a really hot guy on the cover. Um, no, no, yeah, November 9 has like, it's like Oh, it has the like, 9 on yeah, it. Yeah, it's That's November right. 9. It has like different colors in there, like but yeah, it doesn't look like this. This is one of three. There are two other Crave editions. Mm -hmm. And I think it's by Abby Glines, and the other one is Kay Tucker. Yeah. So this is the one that I own, and it's not just a book, but it's a whole experience. There are quotes in here. There are photos. There are, look at this. You should see it. It's huge. <laughs> I haven't read the story yet, but now I can't wait. Be a jackass, Kessler. You can. Just a little bit. You can do it. It's so great. And it has like little notes from Colleen yeah. Hoover in here. It has little sections for you to scan on a mm -hmm. QR code. So when you give people a Crave Edition, you're not just giving them a book. You're giving them an experience. Yes. So highly recommend that. I hope they do more of them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and we're going to do an unboxing video, but one of the things that we recommend for everybody is a subscription box yeah and there are so many out there we both subscribe to uppercase uppercase yes and nancy subscribes to the joy bookworm box and i just got owl crate yesterday. which is on super sale so hopefully yeah. that sale is still going by the time that we get this video up but no that the sale no longer up it ended but they do oh. have a special 10 percent off instead of the, that's nice the you know uh black friday sale they had a one box or a three box or even a six month box mm -hmm. subscription yep. um, and if you have somebody who's nervous about getting a specific like a book that they may not like mm -hmm. Kepler's does a box called I'll link it because <laughs> I can't remember what it's called you remember either and I haven't done it I can't believe that I haven't done but it but you can switch yeah. out the book which is great if you don't like if it, you don't you like you can there. switch it out they tells you what the books are going to be for the next 12 months and you can switch it out for any book you want oh, um, which is really cool and it comes packed with swag and other really cool things so if I like the surprise of not knowing what's in my box I do too even if I get a lot so I have to avoid social media during that I time know, right I don't say anything it's exactly not. exactly well mm -hmm. tell us what your favorite bu bookish gifts are in the comments and we can't wait to see what you get for the holidays yeah. all right see you later